Let's talk money. Money. Yeah. Forbes, a uh, famous financial magazine, released their annual report on the profitability or lack thereof in Major League Baseball. And somehow they're very profitable, despite what owners would like you to hear or like you to believe. The uh, the average value of a Major League franchise has increased 12% over last year to $2.38 billion. Maybe it's $2.32 billion, the average value. Uh, their baseball's gross revenues increased to $10.3 billion, a 7.8% 7. 7. increase uh, over last year. So things seem to be doing quite well overall for baseball. Hey, early question. Would you yes. call that biblical gains? I would call that a biblical valuation is how I put it in my notes. <laughs> but yes, we're, we're thinking along the same lines right there as, of course, the the topic du jour for the last three <laughs> fucking years, of, at least from my side of this podcast, has been Tom Ricketts' disgusting comment that they were Cubs were suffering biblical losses. Uh, speaking of the Cubs, they ranked number four in valuation in all of major league baseball behind the Yankees yeah. Dodgers Red Sox. Uh, that was a red flag for me on <laughs> some really bad things going on on that side. Uh, um, yeah. $4.1 billion valuation up. Uh, I think they were at 3.7 last year. So that's about 10% increase just by being alive, just being the Cubs. Certainly not because of their winning record or, staggering attendance figures because i mean they had decent attendance of course as they always do but they weren't they weren't busting down the doors as they had in in previous seasons so somehow they still made 10 percent more than they did last year or valued that way somehow i saw one i might have this wrong there's a ton of stats here so i'm going to get some wrong but uh they're one of i think eight franchises that made 100 million dollars off of their tv revenue their tv deals alone dang uh, so yeah they're, they're doing quite well i think it was 99 i'm, I'm being unfair they made 99 million. Oh, right. where right. thank you off their lowest ratings for the marquee network ever uh so that tells you it doesn't really matter what the cubs do they are going to rake in money no matter what so that's the genesis yeah, yeah. for a lot of my anger from the last podcast where i was accusing Jed Hoyer and the Cubs of confusing activity with accomplishment, spending a bunch of money that didn't really amount to a whole lot when you, when you dig deeper into it. Uh, I, all in an effort, I believe to get those marquee network ratings up, put some real major leaguers that people recognize their names, put them on the field and get the, get people to watch television. You'll see those valuations and profits rise dramatically, even more than they are now. Yeah, I think this goes back to something we've discussed ad nauseum on this when people are like, hey, I'm going to I'm going to really stick it to the owner and not go to the game or I'm not going to do this. It doesn't matter, guys. Yeah. It doesn't fucking matter. The yeah, you'll that will reveal itself even more as we get deeper into this. Number five on the overall list was your San Francisco Giants, which shouldn't be too surprising. No, they, they're, like that a yeah, they're, they're busy. Brand. They're busy. They spend money. It's it's they try to spend money. Even guys just uh, don't want to come there for some reason. So you got to spend money to make money. Yeah, Here, I got to look some of this up. Well, now. not the Cubs, though. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, that's that's why yeah. Daddy Ricketts thought his son's job or son's idea of buying the Cubs might be a good one because you don't really have to work to make money. Yeah. Um. Your okay. Here we go. So Giants were number five on the list. I'm going to jump down to number 15. The White Sox. Your Sh Chicago White Sox, right there in the in the average range, around two two and a half billion dollar valuation. My Detroit Tigers were number 21, and I think they're at 1.45. And of course, the Oakland A's, right number 29. <laughs> Uh, what's interesting about the Oakland A's, uh, as they were just, just above a billion dollars, the lowest ranked is the Miami Marlins right at a billion, but that just also points out every single owner 
uh, maybe not individually, but every single baseball franchise is worth over $1 billion. So these are billionaires that we are talking about every time we'd speak of ownership. So just from their teams no alone, mistake. guys. Yeah, yeah, just from their teams. That, that alone doesn't the other do with everything. They own. Yes, exactly. No. What's interesting about the A's, they were also listed as the fifth most profitable major league franchise at $62 million profit last year. And I can guarantee I didn't go, I didn't do the math. I let Forbes, I'm just trusting Forbes numbers on this. These are all Forbes numbers. These aren't coming from different areas. So they're all relative to each other. Their methodologies, I mean, it's Forbes magazine. They're, I, they're pretty, pretty out on the ball when it comes to financial matters. So the only way I can imagine that a franchise like the A's who has almost no attendance and uh, not much of a TV deal could possibly make $62 million is because they spent zero on payroll. They spent, I think they started the year at 33 million. I think it ended up being like 40 some million, but it's the revenue sharing. And that is the, yep. you know, uh, estimated $100 million that every team has in profits before they sell one ticket uh, going into the season based on shared revenues, uh, based on, well, last year, the sale of the final portion of uh, Major League Baseball Advanced Media, BAM, as it's known in the industry. They sold the last piece of that to Disney for close to a billion dollars, which was split up evenly 300 or 330 different ways between the teams. Uh, so, the idea that the A's are probably the best business, or at least of the number five business in baseball in terms of profitability, it's obvious their owner, John, is it John Fisher, Jeff Fisher, somebody, fuck that guy. Uh, he clearly <laughs> emphasizes profits over championships because the Oakland A's are not bothering to even try to put a major league team on the field. Uh, yeah, certainly not really last year like or this year. Yeah. So congratulations to him. Uh, the the Giants were actually a very profitable team. I think the Giants may have been number two last year, which is really interesting because they, they didn't shy away from spending money. So, in fact, they made $75 million last year. So I'm, I'm a little what confused. why they were willing to spend. I, I would gather that. Uh, it should be also why every team should be willing to spend because why, I mean, the idea that you're running a baseball team to make a profit instead of winning championships is a slap in the face of every fan is, is, is how I would interpret that. Your white yeah. Sox, on the other hand, are the number three in most losses I know. Uh, across major league baseball. So your increased payroll has cost Jerry Reinsdorf in his pocketbook. Uh, is I think you lost fifty fifty three million dollars last year. Yeah, based on projections. Yeah, that's the, that's the other thing we should all note too. Well, and that's this, this is where a, I didn't want to get too deep into it because yeah, you can turn right. you can move those numbers any way you want. But yeah, you're right. But at the same time, the other part I laughed about is like, okay, they still made over two billion dollars. So who fucking cares? If well, he's worth it. If he no, wanted, really, if he, I know, I know. Yeah, if he had to sell it or whatever. But. If he hated the business so much, he could always sell the team for two and a half billion dollars and somehow be okay. So I don't understand why that hasn't happened. Mm, but anyway. There's a lot of people calling for that. I've seen a billboard or two actually calling for that. But yeah, these I, these these guys on Twitter, they're nuts. <laughs> well, that's that's the Forbes valuation article in, in a nutshell. I thought that was very interesting and insightful, mainly specifically about our teams that we talk about here that led to some shit. I couldn't make up uh, on some other teams uh, that we don't talk about as much, but I had to bring this up when I saw that the New York Yankees are charging their players or they're making their players pay for Wi-Fi in their flight on when they're on their team flights. Uh, <laughs> it's like the soda pop charge in the Oakland A's. Exactly. Same idea. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess it saves the team $40,000 a year, which oh. I mean, every penny adds up. Uh, it certainly adds up when you are worth $7 billion, <laughs> the number one ranked franchise valuation in all of baseball. 
They're charging their players. They're making their payers, players pay for their own in-flight Wi-Fi. I just thought that was hilarious. Of course, the players can afford it too, so it's called kind of just funny, but the, the idea that that would come out uh, makes me laugh. The other shit I do couldn't they, make. Uh, Go ahead. Just a quick question. Do you, you probably don't know this, but it, it, I get this funny picture of like Aaron Judge on the flight trying to put his credit card information into the little <laughs> pop-up window, I'm, or is it something they just take out of their their paycheck? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I was thinking there was like quarters. They had to keep inserting quarters, like an old, <laughs> like an old payphone. <laughs> <laughs> well, equally uh, funny yeah. and equally some shit I couldn't make up was with the Cincinnati Reds, one of the most embarrassing organizations in baseball. It was revealed uh, this week that fifty-three-year-old Ken Griffey Jr. Oh yes, 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 will be the fourth highest paid player on the Cincinnati Reds' 2023 roster this year, even though he retired 15 years ago. He will be paid in defer- deferred payments, uh, 3.53 million dollars, which ranks fourth on their payrolls right now. That, that sums up their their ability to win this year, uh, or their willingness. Uh, yeah, they they're choosing to pay someone who retired 15 years ago more than uh, close to 80 percent of their roster. I just that was just amazing when I saw that. We you know we we do the Happy Bobby Bonilla Day every July 1st, I think it is, uh, when he gets his paycheck from the Mets for one one point one million or something like that. Yeah, you know, uh, depending on what's going on this year, I have a list of guys. Uh, we just had so much, whatever was going on that day when we covered it, we had so much to talk about. I just, and we've, I we forgot it. to talk about it. Well, yeah. I, can, I canned it because I didn't even bring <laughs> it up because the show would have been like three hours, but there are thing there are teams that are way more atrocious than what's going on with Bobby Bonilla that yeah. we should out. Yeah. So, well, this was an example I didn't know about. I guess yeah, I should have assumed yeah. Griffey would be on that list, but I didn't see how much longer this is going to continue. Uh, this could also be a non-issue if the Reds just started having a, a reasonable payroll and got more <laughs> players over three point five million. But what else? Not my team. Um, sorry, Reds fans. <laughs> Media.